friends, today I'm talking about acute glomerular nephritis. I'm going to talk about the signs and symptoms, the labs, the prognosis for the patient who develops acute glomerular nephritis. It's commonly tested on the NCLEX, so that's coming right up after this. Hello, Clinic Review family. It's Dr. Sharon with Clinic Reviews, the home of the very best NCLEX review in the entire universe, in my opinion. You can access it by going to clinicreviews.com. The GOAT, Mark Klimek himself, teaches this. It's an on-demand course. We also do small group tutoring. It's a monthly fee. You get four tutorings, two with Mark, one with me, one with Pete Savard. And we also have a streaming service. So let's go ahead and get started. I am teaching about the Blue Book. It's on page 150 in there today. You can access the Blue Book at Amazon.com. Amazon.com. You can get it at Amazon. How's that? Or you can get the app at clinicreviews.com. Let's go ahead and jump right in. I always teach the content for the blue book by writing questions about the content. It's a fact book. It is content that you have to know, and I write it for you in the form of questions. A seven-year-old child presents with edema, hematuria, and hypertension. The nurse knows that these symptoms are indicative of which condition? Nephrotic syndrome, acute glomerular nephritis, urinary tract infection, or chronic renal failure. So I'm sure you can guess the answer is acute glomerular nephritis because that's what we're talking about today. But let's say you weren't sure, okay? We, we, you didn't know we we're talking about acute glomerular nephritis today. How could we rule out the other answers? Well, nephrotic syndrome is a chronic condition and this is a seven-year-old child. So it's unlikely a seven-year-old child has an, a chronic renal condition. Chronic re renal failure is also chronic. So if I had to rule anything out, I would rule out A and D because those are chronic and this is a seven-year-old child. Th so then I have to go between urinary tract infection and acute glomerular nephritis. Well, urinary tract infection presents with some discomfort, burning with urination, sometimes some low back pain. It does have hematuria, but it also has bacteria in the urine and some other things. So if I have to choose between acute uh, urinary tract infection and acute glomerular nephritis, I would choose acute glomerular nephritis. Now, these are the classic signs of acute glomerular nephritis, edema, hematuria, hypertension. They're very classic signs, and they don't have bacteria in the urine. They can have protein in the urine. So what happens is they get this infection that causes an inflammation in the basement membrane. It's an acute condition, not a chronic condition. And it causes the antigen antibodies to kind of plug up, I guess you could say plug up the kidneys. And so that is what acute glomerular nephritis is. It does cause damage, which is why they have blood in their urine. It can cause hypertension because you plug up the kidneys, it can develop hypertension and then edema. Often facial swelling is a common symptom. What else do I want to tell you about it? Anything? I can't think of anything right off the top of my head to tell you about it. Which of the following is the most common cause of acute glomerular nephritis in children? Viral infection, autoimmune disease, drug toxicity, or bacterial infection? Well, I told you it was an infection and the most common cause of acute glomerular nephritis is strep. I always forget the name of it. It's group A beta hemolytic strep, group A beta hemolytic strep. I'm pretty sure that's right. I know it's a strep infection. So the key thing is that for particularly kids who have strep infections or I'm sorry, a sore throat, it is pretty important for kids who have a sore throat to get tested to see if it's actually strep so they can be treated appropriate for that because it can lead to this acute glomerular nephritis. When teaching a patient with acute glomerular nephritis about dietary restrictions, which of the following should the nurse emphasize reduce sodium, increase protein, increase fluid, reduce carbohydrates. Well, there's no reason to reduce carbohydrates. That's not a risk factor. That's not an issue. So I'm going to cross off D, increase fluid intake. So you should, uh, you should assume, unless they tell you otherwise, that the patient that they're telling you about is taking in two to 3,000 mils a day. That's the recommended fluid intake. So unless they tell you otherwise, you can assume that that's what they're taking in. So if it says increased fluid intake, that would mean I want them to go above 
3000 or at the high end of the two to 3000. And I, there's no reason for that. They're already having facial edema. So I'm really, I'm not going to do that. Increase protein intake. So they protein can damage the kidneys. And so they ha tend to have protein in their urine. So we don't ever increase protein intake. That's never what we do. The question is, do we ever decrease it? We can decrease it if they have what's called azotemia. Azotemia is increased nitrogenous waste in their urine, nitrogen, nitrogen in their urine. How do we know if they have nitrogen in their urine? Blood, urea, nitrogen. That's what a BUN is, blood, urea, nitrogen. So if the BUN goes up, one of the causes could be, azo, could be azotemia or, and it's a, it's a protein issue. So if they have an elevated BUN, we might decrease protein, but it doesn't tell us that. It doesn't tell us that they do. Not every person with acute glomerulonephritis has an elevated BUN. So what is also important? So the reason reducing sodium is always a good answer is because increasing sodium can, can cause increased fluid retention. So if we reduce the sodium, they're less likely to retain fluid. So that's why reducing sodium is always, always, no matter the symptoms or anything, if they have acute glomerular nephritis, reducing sodium is always a good answer. You'll, you'll choose to decrease sodium. You never increase it. You can choose to decrease sodium if there be, I'm sorry, you can choose to decrease protein, decrease protein if their BUN is elevated. Which of the following laboratory findings is commonly associated with acute glomerular nephritis? Select all that apply. Elevated serum albumin. Albumin is a protein, so that would be an elevated protein level in the blood. Decreased blood urea, nitrogen, protein urea, hypercalcemia, elevated serum creatinine, or elevated urine specific gravity. Well, serum albumin is not elevated with acute glomerular nephritis, a decreased BUN? No. If anything, it would be increased. It's not always increased, but if anything, it would be increased. Protein urea. Yes, you have protein in the urine because of the inflammation at the, in the glomerulus and some of that glomerular uh, irritation and inflammation. So you can have protein urea. Hypercalcemia. No, that has nothing to do with it. Elevated serum creatinine. That is common. It doesn't mean it goes up to like 5.6. They don't need to have dialysis or anything like that, but it can be slightly elevated because it is a kidney issue. Elevated urine specific gravity. So that's pretty common. Um, the urine often it, um, becomes hyper concentrated. And so it will have an elevated urine specific gravity. And it often turns tea colored, tea colored. So anytime you see a tea colored urine, that almost always indicates blood in the urine. So it can look really hyper concentrated because of the tea color. And we go, oh, that's concentrated. But it may just be the hematuria that's call it, causing it to be tea colored. And so an elevated urine specific gravity doesn't necessarily mean it's super hyper concentrated, but it might be somewhat more concentrated than usual. That's when specific gravity goes up. Less concentrated, the specific gravity goes down. Which nursing intervention is most appropriate for a patient with acute glomerulonephritis who's experiencing fluid retention? Encourage the patients to drink at least three liters of fluid a day. That doesn't sound like a good idea if they're retaining fluid. Place the patient on a high sodium diet. That doesn't sound like a good idea if they're retaining fluid. The more sodium you take in, the more fluid you're going to retain. Monitor daily weights and intake and output. That's appropriate. Administer diuretics sparingly. So let me reread the question. Which nursing intervention is most appropriate for a patient with acute glomerulonephritis who's experiencing fluid retention? So I'm crossing off A and B. C is appropriate. D, I, I don't love how it's worded, administer diuretics sparingly. I don't know what that means. We can certainly administer diuretics, but I know for sure that we have to monitor intake and output and we have to weigh them every day because increased weight overnight of two pounds or more tells you that they are retaining fluid. And so I need to keep track of that. So I know for sure the daily weights intake and output is an appropriate intervention. I'm not as sure about D and I don't love how it's worded. So remember, you pick the answer you know is right, not the answer you're unsure about. A nurse is caring for a patient with acute glomerular nephritis, which symptom would indicate the development of a possible complication. 
Okay, acute glomerulonephritis, this is a complication. Decreased urine output, increased appetite, clear amber-colored urine, or hypotension. Well, hypertension is a symptom of acute glomerulonephritis, so I don't expect hypotension to occur. Clear amber-colored urine, no, that's that doesn't indicate a complication. That's not that unusual. It's a pretty common symptom associated with AGN. Increased appetite as a complication. I don't can't think of any complication associated with increased appetite, decreased urine output. Well, as the creatinine goes up, your urine output doesn't always go down. So you can have a slight increase in creatinine and the urine output doesn't necessarily go down. Um, so if I actually have a decreased urine output, so decreased means lower than I would expect. That's what I think. So let's say they've been having uh, 400, sorry, my dog's right here, 400 mils in eight hours, and all of a sudden it goes down to 250. I'm going to go, mm, that's not great. Now, 240 in eight, in eight hours is, is okay. So if it went down to 250, I might go, oh, I got to watch it. But if it went down below 240, I'd go, that's, that's a possibly really damaging their kidneys to the point that maybe it's permanent, right? So I'm going to be most concerned about decreased urine output. A complication is unexpected, right? You don't expect them to develop chronic kidney failure or even acute kidney failure. Y'all, acute glomerular nephritis is not acute kidney failure. Their, their kidneys are not failing, they're just not, they're, they're plugged up and we need to, we need to get rid of those plugs, but the kidneys themselves still work. We just need to get rid of the plugs, right? So if you have a, a strainer and you're, you're draining your noodles, you pour the hot water and the noodles into the strainer and the noodles get stuck in the strainer, the strainer still works. You just, just got to get those noodles cleared out so that it can, all the water can go through it. So that's sort of what's happening, right? We're getting noodles stuck in the holes of the strainer. Hey, y'all, quick update. I realized while editing the video that that last question may have confused you because you may have said, why didn't you pick hypotension? That's worse than decreased urine output. But the question doesn't say, which are you most concerned about? The question says, which indicates a possible complication. And acute kidney failure is a possible complication. Hypotension might be the symptom I'm most concerned about, but the only one that indicates a complication is decreased urine output. So I just want to make sure that you're reading the questions correctly. You know how to read them. You use the right strategies at the right time. After teaching a client about the treatment of acute glomerulonephritis, which of the following statements indicate the client needs further teaching. So I'm looking for the false statement. So they have acute glomerulonephritis, which is the false statement. I will take the water pill every morning. I will walk every day for 20 minutes. I will weigh myself every day. I will check my blood pressure every day. I'm going to start at the bottom. I'll check my blood pressure every day. That's appropriate. Hypertension is a symptom of acute glomerular nephritis. And don't say, well, how do they know how to check their blood pressure? We would have taught them. Okay. NCLEX is a perfect world. We taught them how to check their blood pressure and they can do it. Maybe they have an automated cuff. I don't know. I don't, on the NCLEX, I don't have to worry about that. In real life, I would. But on the NCLEX, I don't have to worry about that. I just say, yes, that's an appropriate thing to do. I will weigh myself every day. Well, yeah, they're, we are watching for fluid retention. So I definitely would want them to weigh themselves every day. I will walk every day for 20 minutes. All right. The best treatment for AGN is bed rest. Now it doesn't have to be complete total bed rest, but rest. That's the best thing is rest. Even if they do nothing else, if they rest, a lot of times it just resolves itself. I will take the water pill every morning. Well, if it's prescribed, that's when to take it. And don't say, well, how do I know it's been prescribed? If they say they're taking it, it was prescribed, okay? Is it a, is that an appropriate intervention for AGN? Yes, it is. A, a, a diuretic is not appropriate to get rid of some of the fluid that they're retaining. So yeah, that's fine. They can take that every day. And if they're going to take it, take it in the morning. But I know they should not be walking 20, minute, 20 minutes every day. They need to be on resting, resting, resting. After teaching a client, with acute glomerular nephritis about their disease, which of the following statements indicate correct understanding. So this time I'm looking for the true statement. Last time, false statement. This time, true statement. Correct understanding about AGN. I'm glad this will, re will resolve completely. I understand I will have altered kidney function for the rest of my life. I am glad I will only need dialysis for a few weeks. I will stay in isolation until I'm better. No need to isolate. It's not infectious disease. 
I'm glad I won't, they don't, it sh they should not need dialysis. If they have dialysis, that's a complication, not an expected treatment. I understand I'll have altered kidney function for the rest of my life. They shouldn't, they shouldn't, it should resolve completely. So if they say, I'm glad this will resolve completely. I'm like, yep, you stay, you rest, you follow the medical regimen. It should resolve completely. That's great. So that's acute glomerular nephritis. I hope that was helpful to you. And my dogs are saying good luck to you. And I say good luck to you. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Take care.